Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas, and welcome to this, the seventh in a series of video tutorials for Unity 5. Okay, so last episode, if you remember, we um, we wrote a script to pick up this log just here. Uh, we actually created this log as well, and we also started creating this fire just here. And you'll notice because I don't actually have it selected right now; it's just this particle system icon. So in this episode, we're going to be writing another script because we're going to be creating some collectibles and we'll also put in and use some more assets but before we do that let's keep playing with this fire if you remember last episode I asked you just to carry on playing around a little more with the um, uh, things over here, the uh, the numbers, the uh, options and everything but I didn't really specify what you couldn't, couldn't really do so just uh, I did have a few questions about this saying what's the best way to get it looking a bit more like a campfire, a little more realistic. Your best option is if you go to start speed and let's put this to tell let's put a few different numbers in here and we can see what we come up with. So if we put it as four, you'll notice it starts slowing down. Three, it gets slower and slower. If you put it to zero, it just ends up this kind of glowing mass, which is weird. So if you set it to one. Let's change our angle a bit. So as you can see, it's starting to look a bit more like a uh, like a campfire. Uh, let's also change the start rotation. Let's change this to how about 45. There we go. So it's starting to look a bit more like a campfire. We also change the color to a very deep red. That gives it a kind of intense fire. Green. No, who wants a green fire? That's weird. So let's uh, let's have it a slightly dark orange than what we did have it. Oh yeah, I think is that okay? Yeah, we'll leave it at that. So that's how you get it a bit more campfirey. I think we could do with pulling it to the ground a little as well. So about there. So the ground is burning, but we'll leave it like that for now. So there are other options that you can play around with here. Uh, you don't need to worry too much about it. You can change the colour over lifetime if you wanted to. It's it's entirely up to you. It just makes it. Uh, you could have it lighter at the top as it flares out a little up here. You could have it a lighter colour. Okay, so let's get on with things, shall we? The first thing we'll do in this episode is we'll actually import some new assets. So down here in your asset window. Uh, we'll need to go to objects again. If you remember this folder we created, and what we're going to import in this episode is a nice simple fence system. So as always, drag and drop the whole folder into Unity. And as I always say, these uh, assets are always free on our website. You can have a look at our website on the uh, description of the video below. You can get links there. Um, so if we go into the fence folder. And you'll notice we have two uh, just here. We have the main fence and we have the end of the fence. This is just to make it look that bit more tidier. So the first thing we'll do is we'll do something really simple. Drag and drop straight into Unity. Now it does appear to be very, 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 very small. So over here we've got scale. Let's increase this. Let's increase this to, let's go for 10 for now. It's getting slightly bigger. So let's zoom in. Yeah, it's still a bit small. Maybe we need to do 100 by 100 by 100. And now let's have a look. Does that look better? Do you think we should have it bigger? Smaller? Let's try, let's, let's try it even bigger just to see how we out with it. Oops, not 1,500. That's too big. Okay, so we've got 150 by 150 by 150. So I'm going to rotate it as well on the y-axis by 180, just to make it a little bit easier on this camera angle. And let's change our snap settings. So edit and snap settings. 
and we we'll need to change this to one, one, and one. So now we can build. Let's see, does that fence fit snugly against our building? That's what I'm aiming for. So I'm going to oops, have a quick look around here. And I'm going to make this fence sit right against our building just here. Just there. Okay, so that looks fine there. Next thing, let's create a um, let's create uh, in the hierarchy empty. Oops, I called it with the uh, fence there. My mistake. Let me just get rid of that. So let's try that again. Right click, create empty. Right click again and rename, and let's call this. Fence Village 001. Okay, so now drag and drop into there. And you'll notice we do have a few um, bits and bobs outside of normal things in the hierarchy. We're going to leave them there for now because we will tidy things up a little more in the future. It is fairly tidy for now and it is good practice to keep your hierarchy as tidy as possible. It just helps you in the future when you come to trying to find something you made a long, long time ago. Okay, so back to the fence. And we'll use the good old trick that we used in the early tutorials, which is Control and D, which duplicates. Then hold Control and pull your fence out. And then align to about there I think and then again align to about there and one more I think about there so here I'm actually going to have an entrance so what I want to do now is I want to take this and bring it in so we'll put it there and we'll need to scale it the same size as we had our others. So we need 150, 150, and 150. And now we just need to align it correctly with the rest of the fence, which is going to be about there, I think. So now we need to pull this here. So we have an entire fence all the way along here now, and this will be our entrance. So if we select this bit of fence again, Control D, duplicate, and pull it out to about there. Okay, so that looks fine there. So let's turn our camera angle around. And the next thing we'll do is we will duplicate this again, and we will change the rotation. So we need to change this to 90. Or should we, no, in fact, we'll have that as 270. We'll rotate it the other way. And we'll bring it along here. And then bring it in line with the fence. Just there. That should do. So let's quickly check this corner. That looks just about OK. Let's bring it a little more this way. There we go. So you can be as precise as you want there. I'm just doing this quickly just to uh, get things done and so we can move along. So let's take the fence, duplicate, and gain nice and quickly. And I think we need one more, don't we, there? So we'll do one more. About there, and then let's quickly close this gap just here using the same method we did before. We take the end one, duplicate, and let's change the angle to let's change it to zero. I think zero is the uh, the angle we need. And let's just 
drag into its rough place and then because this gap here is a little bit fiddly we're just going to use this uh, post that we have at the end just close that gap up a little which is this one just here so we duplicate this pull it this way and let's align with everything That's there. Let's duplicate and just pull it to there. One more, I think. Okay, and that'll do for the end of the fence there. So we also have a gap just over here. I'm going to leave that gap open for now. It makes things easier. Okay, so now we have this little kind of area. We're going to use this area now to put in a few collectibles that we will pick up. So the first thing we'll want to do is we're going to create some coins I think. I think coins would be the easiest thing to create. Go to game object at the top, 3D object and much the same we did with the log in the previous episode we want to go to cylinder. Again it comes up as a big thing that doesn't really look like a coin but we'll make it look like a coin now. So we'll change the scale on the, um, let me just move it this way a little bit, let's put it there. Okay, so let's change the scale to, let's say, 0.1, no, that doesn't look really like a coin, is it? I think the first thing we'll do is we'll rotate it so it's kind of lying on its side, much like the log. So we need to rotate on this x-axis to 90. Next thing, uh, we'll change the scale of the Y. We'll change this to 0.2. Oh, that's much too big. 0.02. Okay, that looks a bit better. Uh, we'll change the scale here to 0.5. And again there, 0.5. And let's pull it to the ground. Going to close this in the hierarchy. Okay, so now I'm going to press play. Just going to quickly see if our coin does actually look okay. So we could do with it being just a little bit bigger. So we'll change this to 0 0.75 and 0 0.75. I'll keep this one as 0 0.02. Let's drag it up off the ground very slightly. Now let's have a look again. Okay, that looks uh, a fairly decent size. We'll go with that one. Okay, so right click here just to rename it. And we'll call this coin001. Okay, so this coin, we don't really want it as a, uh, a grey colour, do we? I think we'll have it as, well, let's see. If we go to materials here, right click, create, and click on material here. And I think I'll call this one, let's call it coin001. And over here, uh, if in your inspector pane, just make sure you are selected on normal. If you're selected on debug, just go up here. And click normal. So we want to click on this here, this little box, change the colour, and we'll change it to let's see, should we have a sort of slightly orangey yellowy kind of colour? Okay, yeah, we'll we'll choose that one for now. And then drag and drop onto your coin. Uh, yep, that looks fine. That looks okay. Let's try changing this and see if we get any change. There we go, so if we select that all the way along, that gives us a kind of metallic look, but it makes it a little bit darker. So let's make this a little lighter. Okay, so I think, yeah, I think we'll stick with that there. 
Okay, the next thing we need to do is game object, light and point light. You'll notice that comes in there. So right click, rename, oops, I've uh, done the wrong thing there, my bad. Right click, rename, sorry, and call this coin light zero zero. So light with a T zero zero one. And let's change the color over here to a nice bright yellow. Now let's uh, kind of get this into position. So we want it about there. Now let's change the range to, maybe I'm trying to think of a good number for a range. How about 50? Give it a kind of a, a, a glowing look. That might be too much, I think. Now I'll look at it. Yeah, that's probably too much. So, best thing we can do now is if we drag and drop this onto our coin, and then we zero out all the axis here, or the position. Let's change this back to 20. That's still much too big. Let's try just oh, let's go up slowly. Five. Oops. <laughs> right, so sorry, I'm having problems here. Okay, so five does seem to be too big again, so let's try three. Okay, three looks okay. So we've got this kind of glowing just below the coin. That'll do. Let's try the intensity. Let's change it to 1.1, I think. Okay, that'll do. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is we'll make our coin spin. And to do that, if we go to our scripts folder just here, right click, create, and JavaScript. And let's see, let's call this one coin spin. Double click, and in the same way that it happened in the last episode, this will open up in Mono Developer Game. So we give it just a minute to open. Okay, so we're getting into it now. When it's open, as we did in the last episode, we just need to uh, delete everything that it gives us. Still loading there, taking a minute or two. Okay. So there we go, in coin, you'll notice here you'll probably have this pick up as well, but we have coin spin just here. So we need to click, make sure you click on this one here and delete everything it's given us. Now we need to write a script which will rotate our coin in the way we want it to. So let's start with nice and simple function and then update. You need a capital U there, open close bracket. And then open curly bracket. Now this slide here will be the one where we uh, we enable it to rotate. So we type in transform dot rotate open bracket and then we set some parameters. So zero. Uh, let's see four I think zero and then finally space dot world and then close bracket and remember semicolon next line down close curly bracket and then save okay so your last thing to do here uh, same as we did with the log in the last episode drag and drop this script onto your coin or you can drag it into the uh, the name in the hierarchy. So we'll do it that way. We'll drag and drop there. Now, hopefully when we press play, we should see a spinning coin. Yes, there we go. So you notice we have the shadow there. You don't have to have the shadow there. You can make it spin faster. So let's quickly review that. 
So here where you've got the number 4, let's change that to number 10. Save. Press play again. As soon as it loads, you should see it spinning at a much faster rate. So if you want it spinning very, 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 very fast, you need to increase this number. So I'm going to set it to 4 for now and save. Okay, so the shadow that we have on it, uh, easy. Cast shadows, off. So make sure you do have your coin selected. And over here, it's just a case of selecting cast shadows from the drop down as off. Press play. And there we go. It's just the coin, no shadow. So I'm actually going to leave shadows on for now. Uh, we'll probably play around with it more at uh, another point. Okay, so we'll leave this tutorial there for now. Uh, we've learned a few different things in this episode, a bit more scripting. Uh, next episode, we'll be looking into a bit more scripting. So we'll look at picking the coin up and counting it. And we'll also probably play around with more assets. So until next episode, thank you very much for watching.